So the ember days in Latin are called the quatuor tempora. Quatuor meaning four, and tempora is plural for tempus. Tempora means times. So the ember days are the four times of the year, that is the four seasons, which correspond to Lent, June, September, and December. And there are three days of fasting on a Wednesday, on a Friday, and on a Saturday. Now, the Portuguese and the Spanish referred to these four times, the four temporas, as temporas. And you might be familiar with the Japanese style of frying shrimp or vegetables, tempura batter, that actually isn't a Japanese word. It's actually a Spanish and Portuguese word. And it goes back to the Catholic missionaries in Japan who requested a special meatless meal on the temporas. And so there is the tempura style of Japanese food. The Germans and the English referred to the quatuor tempora, the four times, as the quatembers. And you can see there on the screen, the Latin word tempora is corrupted by the Germans and the English into embor. You take off the T and you get empora or empor. So they referred to the four embers. And we see that in our own language with regard to the calendar. So September is the seventh tempora, the seventh time. October is the eighth time, the eighth month. Now, the four times goes back into creation itself with the four seasons, but it also goes into Roman history as a recognition of the four harvest seasons. These were times of fasting, asking that there might be a full harvest. And in the Roman church, this idea of fasting for a harvest was associated with the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray that the Lord would send laborers into the harvest. And the harvest, of course, is souls. And so, going back to Pope Calixtus, who died in 222, he regulated that all Christians in Rome should celebrate these fasts four times a year, quatuor tempora, to pray for vocations to the priesthood, holy priests, holy laborers in the harvest, in the vineyard of Jesus Christ. Later on, Pope Leo the Great, uh, who died in 461, he actually believed that the quatuor tempora, the ember days, were apostolic institutions, that these go all the way back to the 12th. I don't think that's right, A, because history doesn't testify to it, and then B, we see none of the Eastern churches celebrating the Ember Days. And if it had been the case that John and James and all the other apostles besides Peter and Paul were also celebrating the Ember Days, we'd see them everywhere. But we really only see them in the Roman jurisdiction. Pope Gelasius, who died in 496, he says that all ordinations to all seven orders should be celebrated in conjunction with the Ember Days. And so since that time period, all the way up until Vatican II, the Ember Days were the times of ordination. We see in the book of Acts that the apostles fast and pray, and then they lay hands on the candidate. It's very important to, to keep that apostolic order. And, and so maybe Leo the Great was thinking of that. You know, He sees the apostles in Acts fasting, praying, and then ordaining. So the idea is that ordination happens in the context of fasting. That's something we've gotten away from, and I think it's a problem. We need to get back to that. Now, the Ember Days spread throughout the church in the Roman West. Um, we see in the 600s that the Ember Days are being celebrated in England. In the 700s, all through Gaul, which is modern-day France, Charlemagne is aware of the Ember Days. And from there, it's basically all throughout Roman Christianity until Vatican II. Now, when are the Ember Days? When are these Ember Weeks? Well, if we start the liturgical year in Advent, the first one is between the third and fourth Sundays of Advent. This is around the Feast of St. Lucy. The next one is at the beginning of Lent. The next one is between Pentecost and Trinity Sunday. And then the final one, which is always in September, is usually the third week of September, which is about after the Feast of the Holy Cross. As I said before, all Catholics kept this fast. It was Three days, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, of fasting from all meat and only one meal a day with two collations or one meal with two snacks. So just as we celebrate Good Friday, these three days, 
four times a year, it would be celebrated as the Ember Days. All of this stopped in 1966. Pope Paul VI decreed that all Ember Days should be removed from the calendar and that the clergy and the laity no longer had to observe these days of fast and abstinence. But if you look around since 1966, that springtime of evangelization that John Paul II spoke so eloquently about has not happened. We've seen drops in almost all the sacraments in the West. Uh, we've seen a drops in vocations. We've also seen a spread of heresy and confusion. And now with these recent allegations and revelations, we're seeing moral corruption all the way into the walls of Vatican City itself. So the challenge that's out there is, what can we do as lay people, even priests watching this? What can we do? You know, before I was a Catholic, I was an Anglican clergyman. I was an Anglican priest. And surprisingly, we still had the Ember Days on our calendar. So as an Anglican cleric, I observed and saw the Ember Days on our liturgical ordo. When I became a Catholic, poof, they were gone. I no longer had the Ember Days. So for me, I like the idea of the Ember Days. It's a traditional practice. It's time honored. It goes back to the 200s. And it was a process that brought in fasting in connection with vocations, in connection with prayer. And so I'm challenging myself, and I want to challenge you as well, to take up the Ember Days. Again, you're not obliged. It's not in the books. No one's forcing you. This is total free will. It's volitional. And again, you're not in sin if you break it, if you decide to do it and you don't. But it is a time-honored practice, and we need to pray for our priests, the ones we have. And we need to pray for future priests that we get orthodox men who are holy, who love our Lord, love the sacraments, love Our Lady, and love this great faith that's been deposited in the bosom of Holy Mother Church. So please consider joining me to celebrate the Ember Days. Tell other people about it. Spread this video around. Let people know about what the Ember Days are. And if you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you in more Catholic videos to come. God bless.